Welcome Dragon Slayers, KD here and this is another critical uh, video I wanna make. I wanna talk a little bit about open worlds in today's game and what, what's the meaning, what's even the meaning with open worlds. Uh, worlds. I might kind of wanna talk to that and I wanna, first I wanna say two things like, the one thing is like all my critical videos I do them when I think I have something to say that other people didn't mention and I think with open world a lot of people talked about it and what they disliked about it but they more can talk about the uh, symptoms not really about the problem itself or why these things happen that uh, why these things happen that they in the end this uh, is like and I kind of try to talk about that I also want to talk about two terms we use in 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 the gaming communi community and I think it's wrong to use these two terms to, uh, together or compare these two terms with each other because they're not the opposite and I kind of want to talk about that too and the second thing I want to say is like I will talk a lot uh, I will take as example of course uh, mostly popular games so if I say bad things about the game you really really like it doesn't mean I hate this game or I think this game is shit I just say say that I have some issues with this game and it's for sure not a personal attack against you um, I don't disrespect anyone that likes this game games I just have some issues with these games that are maybe a big problem in today's gaming uh, culture so I want to talk about that so with that um, let's just go to the two terms uh, we often compare with each other and that's open world versus linear game or linear gameplay and I think that's just wrong really to compare these two together because it's two completely different things uh, in the game. One is more level design and the other is game mechanic <coughs> and they may have in the same game of course they can they're a good game with a good gameplay uh, it has both a good level design that works together with a good mechanic and really like this working together that's an important thing you may remember but you can take the, op uh, the level design from another world and comp uh, from another game and compare it to the game mechanic from a different game. That just doesn't work for me. And that's why I think it's wrong to use these both terms: um, open world versus linear game. Of course, it's simple to simple to use uh, because most of the people understand what they mean with the two differences. Uh, but I will, I will try to explain why I think it's really wrong. I, I mean, it's not only that that they're completely different parts of a game. It's also that uh, open world game doesn't mean it can't have a linear gameplay. That's the problem. And many open world games they actually have linear gameplay. I mean, as soon as you f even in open world, as soon as you follow a specific quest, and you can do this quest only in one way, um, you have a linear gameplay. If you're in a dungeon, there is only one way way to go out, or to defeat the boss, or anything like that. You you have a linear gameplay. And or if you do a so-called story mission, and we will talk about story missions later, uh, because I have some issues with them too. Um, you have a linear gameplay. Now, on the other hand, so-called linear games often have also uh, elements of an open world. As example, Call of Duty. You have, um, we would call Call of Duty a linear shooter, but still you have uh, quite often open maps. You can find collectibles in them and so so there is some exploration exploration in there M maybe even some sandboxy stuff yet yeah, for maybe for call of duty not really but you know where I want to go with that so what we call a linear game can have open world elements and what we call an open world can have 
linear gameplay. That's why to compare these two terms, uh, just because it simplifies quite a lot of things, uh, I think it's just wrong. And that's part of the problem because when we look at that we don't really see the problem, we only see the symptoms of the problem. <coughs> Then, of course, I don't want to just uh, say that, uh, just throw that in the room. I kind of want to do alternatives. So if we go linear gameplay, then what's a non-linear gameplay? And non-linear game gameplay is pretty simple. You have a start and you have a goal and you have many different ways. And I mean not ways with going left or going right, but ways with game mechanic um, you have different kind of game mechanics that can bring you to this goal. So, I've one thing that I heard a lot and it kind of makes me a little bit mad is about Metal Gear Solid 5. Many people complain Metal Gear Solid 5 should never have been an open world. It should have been a linear game. Uh, game. But there we have the problem. Metal Gear Solid was never ever a linear game. Even the first Metal Gear Solid was not a linear game. I'm not, I don't know about the Metal Gear games, I never played them how they are, but I know from Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, they're not linear game play, uh, games, because you always had different ways to go to reach your goal. You could sneak the whole way through, you could use non-lethal weapons, you could use uh, lethal weapons and just shoot your way through or you could use like non-weapon at all and just uh, so-called secrecy or something like that. So that's not a linear game. That's a non-linear game. Metal Gear Solid was always a non-linear game. So don't say... So please don't stop saying um, Metal Gear Sh Solid ha should have been an open AI linear game instead of an open world game or an open world sandbox game or uh, what you want to call it because it always had kind of sandbox elements in form of different mechanics and different map weapons you can develop and things like that. Uh, so I hope you see kind of what I mean with that. So we, we will go jump to the gameplay a little bit later. Gameplay will always be a little bit a theme for this whole video, but specify it. I, I want to do it a little bit later. Let's let's go to the not to the open world, but mo uh, to the level design. So I said I I can't just say I uh, like you have an open world, you have, you have a linear uh, linear game and. You can, and I can't just say, yeah, you can't use these terms together without bringing an alternative. And the problem is kind of like, there's no real opposite to, to an open world. So there's not, or let's say not only one. So I give, I give you, including open world three and plus one, that's a little bit close that's or really close to open world games but has some elements of, of an other level design I wanna talk about and that's just so you don't uh, you don't say yeah but there are open worlds that, ha that have these elements too and so on but I kind of want really to specify these things open world and the other possibilities for level design and I hope I can I can really l later on explain the, these differences good so you understand. So the first part is what are games that so called linear games how do they their levels or the level design look like? It's pretty simple there are <coughs> there are kind of different words for it there are it's built on levels, stages or maps if you want so. so instead of a whole open world you have different levels and you have to proceed in these levels. Um, as example for levels, so when you use levels, uh, ma uh, maps or stages or something like that it's mostly a genre thing and not directly 
a, a diff uh, really difference in the game design. I mean, for for jump and run games like Super Mario Brothers, we often use level, and when we beat the level, we get to the next level, or maybe we have to uh, we have sub levels. Like in, I think in Mario Brothers, we have three sub levels, and then we reach sub uh, and, and then we reach the next level. Um, stages we mo often use in kind of puzzle games or games you have to reach some kind of points um, like Tetris or something like that. As soon as you get some po uh, the point limit, you get to the next stage, and the next stage means uh, it goes faster and things like that. Maps we often use more in 3D games, so Call of Duty, I would say, is built on maps. Oh, um, you can, of course, you can say it's also levels. So you have a goal in a map, and you beat the map. Then you have mostly a cutscene between, and then you jump into the next map. So kind of, kind of like that. So that's one thing. And then the second thing is what I already put in the title: uh, an expanding world. And an expanding world is actually an open world with actual level design. An open world is just a level without a real level design, and I will come to that a little bit later. Um, I think the best example for an ex expanding world is Final Fantasy VII, just because I really like this game. <coughs> and when, when you look at the, uh, Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VII has not the biggest open world, but it has an open world. And at some point, you can go, uh, you can reach every point in this open world. You have to do very specific side quests to really reach every point you want to. Um, there are very, uh, still places that are very difficult to reach, and that's why I personally think it's an expanding world is so much in more interesting because you can't just go anywhere, you have to do different things to reach these points. And in point of Final Fantasy VII, you look at the beginning, you have a very, very linear game, uh, a very closed up world, if you want so, you are at the beginning in Midgar, you progress through Midgar, you learn about the characters, you learn about the story, you learn about the game mechanics, and so on, and then suddenly you go out of Midgar and you you just see oh that was just the beginning of the game now it really starts now I can start to go different places but then they give you an uh, then you can kind of explore a little bit but then you see that uh, at some point they blocked your way in Final Fantasy 7 there is this big snake that will fight you and is very strong at this point of the game uh, and you will have difficulty to beat him at this point you s so you have to find another way and luckily there is a sh uh, this chocobo ranch and you have to catch a chocobo and then you can run you can cut through this obstacle and then later on and then you get more of the map and then you get in Chuon you have to proceed in Chuon and then you you are on a ship, you have to proceed on the ship and then you come to the next continent and the map opens up and opens up and uh, and so on. So there is a really level design, there is a progression, the level design and the game mechanics, they work with each other and build the whole gameplay. And that's an expanding world and there are other examples, I mean even the um, the Game Boy Pokemon games, they're kind of an expanding world uh, and games like this. Uh, most of JRPGs, of course, have an expanding world <coughs> and so on. So, I s so there's maybe a little bit the problem with expanding world and open world that they are kind of close with each other. So let's look at open world. What are open world games? I would say uh, Far Cry. Assassin's Creed. Even I know Ass Assassin's Creed has some expanding. Uh, you you can't go everywhere at the beginning. 
but still the restricted area you are that's a clear open world and not a, an expanding world there so and you have only one type of progression and that progression is going through story missions and story missions are part of an open world and not a part of an expanding world and I want to come for that, uh, to that later we have Gosukun Wildlands so I say a lot of Ubisoft games let's take other games Skyrim, Oblivion, uh, The Witcher 3 you will see uh, on this video some game footage of Witcher 3 also Witcher 3 has maybe different kinds of open worlds I would call that like maybe an open world universe but still you kind of go already everywhere at the beginning it's just not recommended from the level and I kind of want to talk about that too about why open worlds are such a problem for me let's say for me personally maybe I would say maybe not only for me personally but let's keep it like for me personally it's a problem now how can you differ an expanding world from an open world there are different way I mean the most easiest way but mo maybe not every time the best way is to say okay after I did the prologue can I go to every spot on the on the map they given me if that's or on on every spot on the world and when that's yes then yeah you have an open world game and not a, an expanding world game of course that's the easiest way but like I said it's not always true because for us since Creed you have this open world this smaller open world that's part of a bigger world and you can't reach every point fr from this bigger world from the beginning but you can reach every point from this smaller world from the beginning or not from mostly not from the beginning but after prologue the same for the witcher you have at the beginning uh, an open world but only this open world and uh, at some point you get more open worlds so that's the easiest way but maybe sometimes a little bit confusing way I think another way very good way to tell the difference between an expanding world and an open world is exchanging important points in the map and if you can exchange these points without changing the gameplay in any way then it's an open world a good example again Metal Gear Solid 5 um, I think Metal Gear Solid 5 it's an open world but it has some level design in it uh, especially you have these um, military camps and things like that and many of them are really built for the game for the different kind of game mechanics so they get they give you different ways you can sneak you can fi uh, take time find some small entry where there's no enemy and you can sneak in you can use lethal weapon you, you can use non-lethal weapons and so on and this military bases are really based on that or even when it's a story mission it's um, it's so built that it works with the story uh, with the story mission of course but if you look at the whole picture if you go to the whole map and you say let's take out this military base and exchange it with this military base on the on a completely different place on the map and does it change anything in the gameplay and the answer is no so you clearly have an open world there and same thing you can say for the witcher is this quest point so important that it can only be there or can you exchange the ruins or the dungeon or whatever with another dungeon and does it differ and the answer is yes uh, is no it doesn't make any difference so you have an open world now an expanding world you can do that if you exchange Midgar in Final Fantasy 7 with the Chocobo range you will get problems in the progression because when you start in uh, when you go out of Midgar and you're in the middle of that, that map and you have that one way that is blocked with the uh, with the snake 
and you can explore the other way it kind of gets confusing um, I mean at this point it may work but you have to go to the Chocobo range that is a lot far, farther away to understand how to get past that snake so at, maybe it works at this point maybe I, I should take another example like like exchange Midgar or exchange the Chocobo range with Chuan that's a good thing because then the Chocobo range is out of your reach um, you can't even pass the, the snake without getting to the Chocobo range so you can't just exch exchange these po points so that's pretty clear uh, that the, uh, we have a, an expanding world and not a open world because the level design it doesn't allow us to just exchange some cities some important dungeons or anything like that so I hope I could kind of clear that up what's an open world what's an expanding world and of course we have this like I said we have this open world universes with different kind of open worlds but the only progression we have there is really the story nothing really more there's no that's not really a level design that's just yeah, I do enough story missions and then I get to the next stage. Um, that's not very in interesting in the long run. More interesting in the long run is what an expanding world does. G give us different obstacles. Give us and every obstacle has a very spe uh, specific solution, but, only on but you can only do that on that point. So why do I... Is an open world such a problem so first thing I have to say I think the problem with the open world is it's just lazy works work from the developers because of course you have to build up this really nice open world but you don't kind communicate with the guys that make the game mechanics or you even build up this big open world and then you okay what game do we put in in this open world it's kind of like this uh, the level design or the has nothing to do with the game mechanics and that's a big problem so now I kind of jump ahead because there, wa there was a first way to say uh, to make a difference between open world and expanding world so I will shortly go back to that so the third way is can I exchange one open world from one game with an open world from a completely different way a uh, different game so I talk about here about only the wilderness of the open world not with the the buildings and everything in it just the whole wilderness and then be, um, I, and yeah you, I hope you understand what I, what I mean with that and often in open worlds it's it's a yes because you can exchange the two completely different games like the Witcher 3 with Ghost Raccoon Bytelands and put them in the world in the worlds and then maybe make some exchanges like put middle uh, medieval buildings into Ghost Raccoon uh, and exchange the Enem uh, the enemies with monsters and then you you can play Witcher 3 in there it's not a problem but it's maybe it's more a problem with an expanding world can you exchange Final Fantasy 7 with Pokemon not really because again we come to the Pokemon Ranch we have the problem we have that there are an obstacle and we need to and we don't have the right mechanic we don't have chocobos in in Pokemon so we, we can't go further from there so you can't really exchange that that was the fourth point I just want to say shortly so let's go back to kind of like why I think the developers do a little bit a lazy job with, with an open world um, again like because the level design has nothing to do with the game mechanics and that's the problem it's kind of like I won't say they build a first world and then they make ah, let's do what game do we do but probably they do it uh, on on the same run some 
one team builds the level and one team play builds the game mechanic and then they kind of co come together and then they fill it up with some repetitive side quests and then it's, uh, sell it like that and that's not how it should work it should like they, these both teams sh need to work together so we have a world that interacts with the game mechanics and that's the problem the really the problem that they often really don't feel like it maybe in some way like i said maybe metal gear solid the, there is some level designs and when you go to story missions in the witcher there is a level design but like i said i will come back to the story missions again so my problem so let's go to personally my problems with open worlds one thing is the motivation you have you may have a prologue or something like that that like skyrim or also the witcher 3 has something like that that kind of shows you the world you get into it often do doesn't explain too much but it shows you the world you're in too and to be honest skyrim uh, uh, does a really good job with the witcher 3 i had a little bit more problems because i didn't play the one and two and i often how should i say i for a long time i didn't buy the witcher 3 or played it because uh i hated to just jump into a franchise in the middle in the middle of it and not start with with one and that's maybe why i proceed i didn't really proceed much in the witcher 3 that's may maybe one point but let, that's maybe for a different discussion or maybe later, a little bit later. Let's keep going. Like, for me, I have a problem with motivation. Some people say, yeah, it's, it's very interesting to explore the world, the world, to just have this opportunity to go north, south and west without anything that holds you up, like the story or like... Uh, like I said, a blockhead in an in a in an expanding world, but yeah. But for me, it's like, why should I do that? I mean, I just jumped into this world. Um, I don't have good equipments. Um, I have no companion or anything like that. But I have this opportunity to walk everywhere. But I know if I go the wrong way, I probably will meet two strong enemies. I can't beat at this point. Or or even worse, like I can go south, north, west, east, wherever I want to go, but I just find the same side quests there. So it, it, maybe the region is kind of different, but it looks different, but the things you do there is not really different from what, what you can find in another place. So you often, I mean, Skyrim is, a, is the best example. You have this possibility after the prologue to go every, everywhere you want, but I bet that 99% of the players that played the game for the first time, for the first time, went down the mountain, went, followed the river, and went to the small village there, and then from there went to the big city in the east. Uh, maybe did some side, side quests, maybe some dungeons between, but mostly going in this direction. I'm pretty sure most of the people did that when they fir the first time played Skyrim. Maybe the second time when they played Skyrim, um, they were maybe a little bit different. I found out I still followed this kind of road when I played it the second time Skyrim. And that's what I mean. I don't see really see the motivation in going in exploring the world because I don't know anything about this world. I don't know yet. Can I find something there? Um, I don't know if I go there, uh, go south, maybe I will find a good weapon. If I go north, I will find an interesting uh, bo boss fight. If I go, if I go east, um, there's some interesting side quests waiting for me. And if I, I, I have no idea about this, these things, and in the end, I need kind of quests to even have the motivation to explore explore these areas or anything like that it's totally different in an expanding world because they don't give you the whole world at the beginning they give you parts of the world and maybe 
because these kind of parts are small uh, are smaller are easy to reach so you kind of like feel like yeah before I finish uh, before I go straight ahead to the next part of the game I maybe go take a look uh, west and see what's there and there it works uh, because absolutely because mostly of the time you just establish the whole thing like I said earlier like you have you already established the ca characters you already established the the story the world the game mechanics and so on so you so I say you kind of feel braver to to go to take a look and you exactly know because the area is still restricted the enemies you will find there they're, they're not a really that big of a problem but in the open world and that's the next problem is like with the enemies that's what I had with the Witcher 3 I got the Witcher 3 um, in 2017 um, it was the game of the year edition with uh, all the DLCs and everything and, and I got it finally because everyone was talking very good about the game and I had really problems like because there were like question marks everywhere and I kind of wanted to see what's there at the question mark so that's a way actually a good way to make exploration in an open world kind of sense giving me this question mark so I want to go take a look there, there, there in The Witcher 3 I have this motivation but the problem with The Witcher 3 is like I will find often enemies that are way too strong for me and then I die I have to load because auto save is only on special points so I have to load uh, way way back um, that's annoying I have to do all over again M maybe I took I had to ride my horse very very far and it took a long time and now I have to do the same shit again uh, and so on and that's very demotivating for me and that's why I I'm still pretty early in the game I think level 7 or something like that maybe you will see it in the gameplay And like I said, it, the Witch, I don't want to say The Witcher 3 is a bad game and I absolutely hope that The Witcher 3 for me, as soon as you really reach a certain level, you will get less these problems. Now, all the problem with open world is of course that then the loading it takes forever. If you, As soon as you die, maybe you have a difficult quest, even if you save shortly before, you always have to go through all this loading and it takes forever to load this fucking open world. As stunning and things that it looks um they're just coming problems with an open world like this so that are two things motivation and overpowered enemies i think kind of with another problem with enemies i had with oblivion and many people think oblivion is even a better game than skyrim i heard i don't think so and my biggest problem was just that the, all the enemies it didn't matter where you went they went the, le the levels went up with your level and that was really annoying because that's not what, a, what an RPG should be it shouldn't be the world that levels up with you there should be places in the world that are he um, there more difficult enemies so you have to work harder to get in there and you get some some prize out of it but Skyrim and Oblivion they absolutely don't work like that absolutely in Ob Oblivion there is no no reason for me to go into a dungeon or a mine or anything like that that it hasn't a quest mark over it because I exactly know how I won't find anything special in there maybe I will find a better weapon than I have now but I can get this weapon in a different way too so th there's no special weapon or special equipment there in any way or except for quests anything special outside of this quest of course you get thousands of quests there but 
to do anything else than a quest it, it just doesn't make sense for me and there's so then there's the question why do you need an open world uh, um, when you anyway have quests and things like that then maybe you should really do an open world and stop doing this quests or at least quests points so with this idea yeah, just saying like yeah there is a mine in the south and um, and you find something there and then you have to go in, in to the south and maybe there are three mines there and then you have to find out which which mine him he, he talked about or something like that and then it kind of makes more sense to have this open world and then again we, sp we suddenly have some level some fucking level designs sorry for the fucking I hope you kind of understand here what I mean with that let's go to the next thing and that's the so-called story missions I think the biggest cancer of open worlds a game shouldn't have story missions I say it like this that's the worst thing you can do uh, a good game with a good story you're always into the story in the story even if you do side quests uh, you're still kind of in the story or let's say differently maybe you're not directly in the story maybe because you do something else but the story missions shouldn't be the anomaly of the game one problem I have with The Witcher 3 and even more with Final Fantasy 15 is the, sto is the story missions in The Witcher 3 the story missions are extremely good but they kinda are annoying because they throw me out of the world of out of the open world um, out of doing this looking for the question marks and uh, sometimes for a really long time and get, even give you very hard fights you have you need different attempts to beat them things like that and it can't be that the story missions are feeling like it's something wrong it's different than the normal game and that's why I kind of hate story missions. The same I ha have with Metal Gear Solid 5. I think Metal Gear Solid 5 is the only game I could defend the open world system because they never. Um, let's go to that maybe a little bit later. Let's keep with the story missions. Even there, I really enjoy doing this side, side ops. And I like to do the side ops and. I think every time, every time I have to do uh, my main mission, I'm, I'm a little bit like, ah, oh, but that will take so long until I can go back to the side ops because the side ops are so nice, short, and so on. And then, of course, I play the side, uh, the main missions, and m many of these main missions are very interesting, have story elements in it, and so on. And that's amazing, but I still have this feeling like, ah, oh, that. That's annoying to do this story mission now. I would rather to do some more side side ops. Uh, I have that with Metal Gear Solid 5. I have that with The Witcher 3, and I absolutely have that with Final Fantasy 15 because Final Fantasy 15, 15 the worst parts of the game are the fucking story miss. Eh, sorry for the fucking again. Are the stupid story missions there because they're so bad. First, you can't you can't even save in the story mission. And often you have to like travel 30 minutes with a stupid boring looking dungeon where everything is dark and beating up the same enemies and you can't f uh, can't save between these missions and that's so annoying for me. Or you go to a, to an enemy base and they give, give give you stealth elements what what the fuck are you thinking square enix why stealth in a final fantasy game stop doing that go back to turn-based games please go back to turn-based oh, jrpgs yeah anyway that was my little bit final fantasy 15 rant here you see what i mean with story missions are the they feel off in in open world games and 
expanding worlds you're kind of like you're always in this in the story you never leave the story they're not story missions all everything is a story and if, maybe if you do a side quest then maybe you stroll out a little bit out of this story but you're never f really far away and some side quests they maybe even give you more um, explanations about some of the side characters or mo or about the world or things like that and that's just a better way to do than these stupid really story missions uh, yeah that's not a selling point for me for a game if you have story missions the game itself should be the story I hope you understand that a little bit so that's the kind of problems I have with open worlds or personal problems let's talk a little bit about Metal Gear Solid and then we go we finished the whole thing with the with gameplay uh, just really short about gameplay and really short about Metal Gear Solid 5 so I just re told you uh, I kinda can I kinda see the motivation in The Witcher 3 or I have this motivation which of you to go see what's on this question marks that are in the maps uh, and I also don't have a problem with the open world in Metal Gear Solid 5 like so many seem to have and the point is like the game never gave me the gave me this motivation to explore and when I think why do you Many people say, yeah, the Metal Gear Solid uh, world is so empty and nothing to do outside of the missions, but the game never, never told you to explore the world. And that's kind of why I can defend it, so then you can say, yeah, but it's useless, but I still think, like I said, for this non-linear gameplay that uh, Metal Gear Solid has, it just makes sense to make this open world, to give the player this many opportunities even have the opportunity with the chopper to for to go very close to a very close drop point in the map uh, and first go in guns blazing with with the help of the chopper or you can go far away so you can sn really sneak in to a base and things like that and for me it just makes sense with the game mechanics that you have there this open world maybe maybe could have done it a little bit different more like I said more smaller maps or or still big maps but with only one or two bases in there for the uh, for the story missions and or like I said or that's maybe the problem with Metal Gear Solid that it has story missions and the others uh, Metal Gear Solid don't have story missions I think that's the only problem I really see but I think in a in that way they build up this game and yeah they have the story missions that's maybe not a good point but it kind of makes sense there to do an open world on the other hand in Skyrim it's not really needed in the end you everyone follows the quests you can do and as soon as you say yeah but I Hurt in the south is something I read something in the forum or something. Then it's not not exploring anymore, because you read there is uh, something interesting there. That's my opinion. And then the, again, the open world is not really makes no sense to put in there. It won't make more, much more sense to make an expanding world just to keep the player interested in the game, because otherwise. Every every of this game, uh, like I said, I got Final Fantasy 15. I'm still not finished with it um, because I'm not motivated to do the story missions. So I do. Uh, I play from time to time um, some side quests there, but I don't really jump into the story mission. The Witcher 3, like I said, I'm in level, level seven. I hope I find the motivation to play this game more. I kind of see the potential and I really hope it will get better as soon as I reach uh, bigger, uh, higher level. I'm not finished with The Witcher 3, uh, I'm not finished with Metal Gear Solid 5. I never finished Skyrim, uh, I started it like two or three times, I never finished it. 
I'm not sure if I finished Oblivion. I think as soon as I reached level 20 in Oblivion, I stopped uh, uh, playing it because it just didn't get any interest anymore because you already reached the highest level. Uh, I didn't finish Wildlands, Ghost Recon Wildlands. And I think there's are more examples. I never finished Assassin's Creed 3 and I never picked up another Assassin's Creed after that. So I think that's, yeah, let's keep it with that. Let's shortly, I, I want, maybe that's for another video. Let's leave it for another video about linear versus non-linear gameplay versus uh, simulation. It's pretty sim, uh, like I already talked about the linear, you have linear gameplay doesn't mean you don't have an open world, it means the game mechanic allows you only one way or very similar ways to finish your job, while non-linear gives you more opportunities there. And the simulation is more like it's not important to get to the point, more important is uh, the gameplay itself. So I don't like simulation games and yeah I put that in here because Many open worlds are more like simulations, like walking simulation, riding a horse simulation, driving a car simulation. Oh, GTA 5 is another game I never finished. It's it's also an open world and has exactly the same problems. It has even more problems because uh, GTA has so many copycats that it's just for me it just doesn't say anything anymore. It's just, as soon as I have this opportunity to go everywhere and I get the car, I want to throw away my controller. It's just so overused, I, I just don't want to play, play a game like this anymore. So GTA 5 is also in this category. Now GTA 5 is a driving simulator with some shooting minigames and some other different kind of minigames that don't make really sense to put in like, these games. Yeah. Yeah, I hope you kind of understood what I mean here. What's an open world, what's an expanding world, why I dislike open world, why I think open world are a problem in today's game culture. Um, I think, okay, and with that I want to finish. I hope you kind of liked it, uh, you found it a little bit informative and, and maybe a little bit entertaining. I hope if you made it so far, even if you disagree with me, you will put a thumbs up and please tell me in the comments what you think is uh, that totally bullshit what I talk about or are you see what where I'm getting here but disagree or things like that please try to be polite and put your opinions in it I try to read everything and with that I again thank you and I want to finish the video <laughs>